natural selection, a process which had once favored the noblest traits of man, now began to favor different traits. We could just call this like the libs of TikTok day because I'm, I'm mostly gonna be harvesting directly from her Twitter feed. I can only just hope, uh, continue to hope that she doesn't get banned from Twitter because that would be like 80% of my show prep out the window. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go through these and we'll start with clip six. Hi hey friend, I know that you mean well, but I need to let you know that this is not true. First things first, paganism is not one religion and pagans have many varied beliefs. Yeah, right. Now, I'm something of a pagan myself, and I can personally assure you that fey pronouns are not offensive to me. And if they're offensive to you, it doesn't really matter to me because they remain my pronouns. And now for the part of the program where I issue corrections. Because this is very interesting. I, I don't know why you chose fey, fey self pronouns, or to use the word paganists when pagans would work just fine. People against goodness and normalcy. Pagan. I get the distinct feeling that you've never Googled this to confirm it, which is something that I highly, highly advise you do before you repeat stuff in the future. Have a great day. Uh, I would advise the opposite. I would advise that you do not Google fey, fey self pronouns because it will send you down a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. So apparently what's happening here is we're dropping into the middle of a debate among TikTok pagans. And the debate is about whether fey pronouns are offensive to their TikTok pagan culture. And by the way, I did actually, I took his recommendation and I did look it up. Fey pronouns are self-identified fairies. That means that most of us have been misgendering the tooth fairy all this time. Hello. Hi. I think we had kind of had this sexist assumption that the tooth fairy is a female. I've always referred to her as a female, but we should have been saying fey, I guess. By the way, how does that work? So your pronoun is now just your noun. Like, it, it, so you're a fairy, and that, and then fairy is your pronoun. If you're an elephant, then your pronouns are I don't know Ella and Fant. How does that make any sense? So what else is there to say about this? First, elephant in the room. Speaking of elephants, it's kind of ironic if this guy does identify as a tooth fairy, given the state of his teeth. Matt Walsh is being mean. I mean, come on. I don't mean to be rude. I just, I'm like pointing out the irony. Second, this is what happens when people are abandoned to their delusions. Because this person is just lost in a tornado of, of bullshit. That's his, his, it's, like, it's like the Wizard of Oz moment. And he's, and he's Dorothy in the whole house has been uprooted and the Wicked Witch is flying around there. Like that, that's, that's his whole, that's his mind right now is that. His whole life is overtaken by it. And it's clearly not making him happy. That's one of the real um, important insights, I think, that you can find if you, if you uh, do go to TikTok and, and you, know, you find the leftists on TikTok and you start watching some of their stuff. It's like, yeah, it, it's all nonsense and it's crazy. But maybe even more importantly, you see that th this is, these are not happy people. Part of the attraction, I think, for this stuff, uh, for these people, is that they think it's going to make them happy, yes. And it doesn't. I think it also, it gives them something that they can be an expert in, okay? It's a subject they can learn and be authorities in. So this guy's an authority in, in neo-pronouns, and, uh, and he's delivering a lecture in neo-pronouns. Now, the subject that he's an authority in is, again, bullshit. It's total nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. But it's this invented game they've made up, and he's an authority in those rules. It's hard to even parse this and say what's the worst part about all this, but that's, that's one of the worst things about it, is that it causes people to just focus their lives on this stuff that it just, it's total, complete nonsense. Okay, you're bored, you want to find something to do with your life, find any other subject. Become an expert in any, any real thing that's happening in the world and focus on that instead. You know, hiring used to be really hard. You'd post your job on multiple sites, you'd hope the right people see it, and then you would wait for them to apply. Well, now there's a place you can go that makes hiring faster and easier. It's called ZipRecruiter. Head to ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh and try it for free right now. ZipRecruiter's matching technology excels at finding the most qualified candidates for a wide range of roles. 
see a candidate you like, well, you can easily send them a personal invite so they're more likely to apply. It also gives you a competitive edge against other employers who may also be interested in that candidate. Their user-friendly dashboard makes it easy to filter, review, and rate your candidates all from one place. See how much easier hiring is with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. You can check it out for yourself and see how well it works. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Walsh to try ZipRecruiter for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash W-A-L-S-H. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Generally speaking, there's three kind of big buckets of reasons why someone might engage in intentional weight loss. First is desirability. Second, health. Third, stigma. Hey, don't call me fat! <laughs> but at the end of the day, all of those are rooted in fat phobia in different ways, and I'll explain. I can't wait. First, desirability. That is kind of the most obvious when it comes to fat phobia. We currently live in a society that uplifts thinness, able-bodiedness, whiteness, cisness, and heterosexuality as the things that are most desirable. See, you're always saying there's something wrong with society, but maybe there's something wrong with you. And so if you are wanting to lose weight in order to become more desirable, you are upholding a fat phobic beauty standard. As well as, you know, white supremacy and all that jazz. Ah, of course, of course. So next is health. What we know is that weight is not is a good indicator of someone's Okay, we can stop. We can stop that. Please health. stop that. First of all, fat phobia is a concept. Game plus size is a choice. Life's too short to exercise. I'm just going to be honest. Actively not wanting to be fat. You're fat phobic. Oftentimes when they attach phobia to something, homophobia, transphobia, it's uh, not a valid word or concept because no one is afraid, right? The, 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 the things that are labeled transphobia, this is not fear. I'm not afraid of trans people. How can I be afraid of something that doesn't exist? Oh, snap. You can't actually be that. You can claim that. You can claim that identity. You can say that about yourself. You can see yourself that way, but you can't actually be that. That's not a, that's not a, that's not, that is not an, a, a state of being that anyone can actually be. So that's not really phobia. On, on the other hand, though, fat phobia, like, yeah, that's okay. It, it makes sense to be afraid of that. Not necessarily afraid of fat people, but afraid of fatness, afraid of obesity. It makes sense to have a phobia, if you like, about that, because it's a very dangerous thing and it will kill you. And it is rather reasonable to be afraid of things that will kill you. So it's not that you're worried about a fat person coming along and killing you. Oh my God, get out of here, get out of here. But you're, you're worried about yourself becoming obese and how that would affect your health. So you should be afraid of that. The other thing you see in the videos is just one of the biggest lies from the left, and it's that they just believe in living and letting live. Like they just want to live their life and they want you to live your life. Kumbaya. Wait, I know it. Kumbaya, you know, kumbaya. It was never the case. That was always a fraudulent claim. Where now you've got this woman who feels perfectly entitled to sit here and tell you whether it's okay for you to lose weight. And she's going to tell you whether it's okay for you to lose weight and what are the acceptable reasons for you to lose weight? And what are the unacceptable reasons? So as it turns out, while they pretended they wanted to just live and let live, they actually wanted to control every aspect of your life. And not just every aspect of your life and the things that you do, but what you think. They want to control what you think and, and how you perceive yourself. That's what they want to control. Not dating trans people is not a preference. Not dating blondes is a preference. Not dating people who are, I don't know, shorter than five, six is a preference. Shall I describe it to you? Or would you like me to find you a box? Not dating people with brown eyes is a preference. Being trans is not a specific characteristic. Thus, you can't label it as a preference. That's just called bigotry. No one's forcing you to date trans people, but don't cover up your oh, hang on a sec. discriminatory bias in the name of preference. Because the logic doesn't add up. Like I've said in many a video, the logic of transphobia never adds up. Uh, so they're going to tell you when is it when it's acceptable for you to lose weight and what are the acceptable reasons. And they're also going to tell you who you're allowed to be attracted to. So that was the ultimate. That was the, the, the sort of the final shoe to drop because that was supposed to be the most 
sacred thing of all, the most private and personal thing is your sexual attraction. And nobody should have anything to say about it. No one should have any opinion about it. You can be attracted to whoever you want in whatever way you want. And that's all there is to it. Man, everyone's gay once in a while. And then it turns out that, well, not really. Because they, they have put themselves in a position to tell you that it's not okay to not be sexually attracted to trans people. You have to be sexually attracted to trans people. They will berate you until you discover within yourself a sexual attraction to trans people. You know, if you're a heterosexual man, that means that you're attracted to females. Okay, it's not like your entire attraction is oriented against trans people. That's not relevant. You're not thinking about that. You're attracted to females. And a trans person, trans, quote unquote, trans woman, a man identifying as a female, actually isn't one. Lefties losing it. You might have a heterosexual man on the left who pretends to affirm this person's female identity, but in, in reality, he, he doesn't. He sees the difference. That's what they're actually upset about. It's because they realize that, like, it take, you know, anyone can come along and say, oh, yeah, uh, trans woman. Trans women are women. And yet the trans activists have noticed that although a lot of people will say that, I'm not going to say it because it's not true, but lots of people will. Even 99% of the people who say that, well, they're not actually, when it comes to their own sexual attraction, when it comes to picking sex partners, uh, if they're heterosexual, they're picking the opposite sex, the actual opposite sex, no matter what they claim. And uh, I think we've probably seen enough of that. We'll just leave it there. And Godspeed. Up yours, woke moralists.